Hello folks. Well, this time I want to talk about software design at a more conceptual level for a little while. Some of the the ideas that might drive how we might go about dividing our system up into manageable chunks. So let's see where we get to here. In all likelihood in your first year courses and previous courses, you've been introduced to some basic ideas in terms of things like top-down design, where we're breaking a system up into smaller and smaller components. Um, the idea of modularity, where you want to be able to have an abstract view of some component, build the implementation of it as kind of a, an enclosed box, if you like, and to be able to pull out components and insert new ones to replace them without having to redesign the rest of the system. So these I'm hoping you've seen it uh, at earlier levels along with things like abstract data types, where again, you've got the idea of some kind of an interface to your data type, and then the details, the implementation is more or less hidden from you. So both of these things allow you to focus on one part of the design, one aspect of the design at a time, and abstract away the details that you're not interested in right now. So when you're working at the high level, you're not thinking about how it's implemented. When you're implementing it, you're not worried about how they're using it as long as you follow the rules for what this is supposed to deliver to whoever wants to use it. So again, lets you simplify your view of the system at any given point in time. So I want to talk about the ideas of decomposition in a little bit more detail. So somehow, some way, we have to come up with how we're actually going to break our system up into smaller components so that we can follow this idea of modularity and abstraction. So some of the things that we're going to look at when we're thinking about how to decompose our system are going to include things like, well, who is interacting with the system or with pieces of it? What data does the system take in or a piece of it? What processing does it do? What data does it push out? Can we break the tasks up or can we break our system up into components where these tasks are kind of divided? Can we put most of the data input into one part of the subsystem or one subsystem of our overall system? Can we put most of the data output into some kind of a reporting subsystem? Can we put most of the data processing or manipulation into a portion of its own? So we can kind of logically break up our tasks that way, our system that way. So you start trying to think of your overall system as a bunch of key subsystems that are interacting with one another, where you've got the things that they're doing logically compartmentalized. So when we go through and start decomposing our system, we'll look at this at the high level for the system overall. What are these major components? And then when we dive into any one component and we try and design that, we're going to look at how complex it is and break it up into its own subsystems and just continue this process kind of hierarchically developing this tree of decompositions. And eventually we get down to components that are simple enough to just describe as they are, where we don't have to decompose it further. So hopefully that's just kind of a restatement of what you are already doing for your designs. But we want to look a little bit more at how we come up with that decomposition. So again, I mentioned this idea of looking at what takes place in the system and can we divide our system up into subsystems based on dividing the kinds of tasks that they do? So do we have a whole bunch of data input and error checking? Maybe that all belongs in one unit together. Do we have a whole bunch of data storage and access to the data storage? You know, whether that's in an abstract data type or a database or whatever it might be. Does that belong in some kind of logical unit? Is there a whole bunch of data processing, data transformation? If so, maybe that belongs together in one logical unit. Is there a whole bunch of reporting or output that's generated? Again, maybe that belongs in one logical unit. So on the one hand, we're looking at how to get a good balance of the what the different pieces are doing, right? getting a good decomposition so that similar things are done together, if you like because the code for them is going to be closely related. Um, and it, it might make sense to have you know one person or one team working on that portion and to have that stuff compartmentalized together. 
The other thing that we might look at doing when we're trying to figure out how to decompose things is what kind of balance do we want in terms of how much of activity X is done in any given subsystem and on any given piece of the our overall system. So we've got a lot of data processing, a lot of data storage, maybe a lot of data transmission taking place. We want to look at where are good places for those things to take place. If we have a component that involves some really heavy data processing and we know most of our end users at their end don't have a lot of processing power, then we don't want to push the data processing off to their part of the system. We want to do that server side. On the other hand, if we've got, uh, if a lot of our clients have fairly poor bandwidth, then we don't want to be transmitting huge amounts of data back and forth to them. On the other hand, if we've got a whole bunch of server side connections where we do have tremendous bandwidth or tremendous processing power, maybe that's the logical place to put things that involve heavy data transmission or heavy data processing. So we're thinking about when we carve up our system, where are the logical places to do different pieces? What kind of an impact does that have on the overall behavior of our system? So we're also going to come back and look at a couple of concepts called cohesion and coupling as ways to evaluate how effective our decomposition is. But I'll come back and talk about those fairly soon. So the idea of load balancing I was just mentioning. Again, if we've got a complex system, we might have a lot happening server side, some things happening client side. We've got a lot of data being transmitted back and forth between them. Maybe we've got web servers, database servers, we've got a whole bunch of data processing servers, and there might be mirrors and gateways and all sorts of other wonderful things. And we want to think about, okay, what pieces of our information should be processed where? What activities should be taking place on the web server? What activities should be taking place on the database server? What kind of an impact does that have on the amount of information that's being transmitted back and forth between them? and how sensitive the information is, right? We might not want sensitive information broadcast back and forth in various places. So if we've got sensitive information, we might want to process that close to its source and then broadcast the safer, you know, cleaned up version. So you're thinking about the impact that your decomposition of the system, both physically and logically, you're thinking about the impact that has on the behavior of the system and the risks associated with the, the system. So again, you know, client side, your user might have a bunch of apps that are using your, your software, or they might have browsers or whatever it might be. So you're thinking about what should be done there, what should be done server side. And you're trying to balance all of this. So this is one set of things to think about when you're coming up with a design, coming up with a decomposition. Once you've kicked around some ideas, usually you're going to come up with a variety of different possible designs, different possible decompositions. And then you're going to look at those and say, okay, well, what are the good and the bad of each of them? And these are some of the things that you're looking at when you're trying to evaluate good and bad. So I mentioned these terms coupling and cohesion, and they're just terms for different properties, if you like, of the system. So the idea of coupling is saying, okay, if I've got a whole bunch of different parts to my system, how tightly intertwined are they? If I change part A, does that mean I have to change something in part B or I'm likely to need to change something in part B? So coupling is the notion of, again, how, how tightly these two things are linked together. How probable it is that changes in one are gonna force me to make changes in the other. So if we're following this idea of you know, decomposition and modularity and abstraction, we want sort of loose coupling so that I can change things inside one piece without that forcing me to make changes inside another. So we're aiming for loose coupling. Cohesion, on the other hand, is an idea of how logically all the different parts of one particular component fit in that one component. Does everything that's in there logically belong together? 
So with cohesion, it's often a little bit easier to describe things that aren't cohesive than things that are. So if you can look at something and say, you know, this one, one of these things doesn't belong here. If you've got a whole bunch, you've, if you've got an inventory system and a payroll system, and your payroll system has a whole bunch of payroll stuff in it, and then it's got this one little chunk of inventory code stuffed in the middle someplace, you might look at that and say, okay, that piece is not cohesive, right? That part doesn't fit with all the rest. Or if you've got um, a whole bunch of code that's focused on a, a piece of your system that's focused on interacting with the database, and then it's got one piece that goes off and does something with the user interface then you might turn around and say, okay, that isn't particularly cohesive. There's this one part that doesn't really fit with all the rest. And the way poor cohesion often, often evolves are cases where we just really don't know where to stick some piece of our code. So we just kind of stick it anywhere that's convenient or the first place we think of. And you wind up with code where most of this stuff seems to belong together, but there are these one or two other odd parts that just seem to get stuffed in. So we're looking for tight cohesion, things that logically belong together, and loose coupling. So when you're looking at, you know, what might, what things might be grouped together to make it cohesive, then you might think of, again, things that operate on a common chunk of data, or interact with a common user or set of users, or things that happen together in a rapid sequence of events. So, you know, it's always this, then this, then this, then this, then this. You might decide those things logically belong together. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can try and divide your components up to be logically cohesive. And again, what you're doing once you've come up with a couple of different designs is just evaluating them. Do they make sense? Are they logically cohesive? And for almost everything you, that you do, they're going to have ways that they are more cohesive in ways that they're less cohesive. And you're just trying to effectively evaluate that so that when you're looking at your design, you've got a, a reasonable basis for making decisions about it. Right? You've thought about what's good and bad about it. You're not just kind of blindly whipping something together and, and just going, okay, well, uh, that'll do. I'll, go, I'll just go with that. So it's trying to have a structured, rational approach to what you're doing. Uh, let's see, some of the other things that I wanted to talk about while we're on the subject of design are thinking about the priorities for the project. Right? When we're doing a design, that design should reflect what the long-term goals for the project are. If we've got um, something that's going to be maintained for years and years and years, where it's likely to evolve over that time, then our design has to take into account the need to evolve over time. So it has to make things adaptable. And that's going to be a focus when we're designing it, is thinking about this and putting extra effort into the design to support that. On the other hand, if we're not expecting huge changes in the design over time, but we've got some real efficiency issues, maybe the, the device that this thing's running on has got really limited bandwidth or really limited memory or whatever it might be, really limited processing power, then we might sacrifice some of the other sort of quote unquote good design principles in order to make it more efficient in whatever aspect it might be. But you're thinking about this consciously up front, and hopefully you're documenting all this as well so that it's clear to whoever's implementing the system that we made this design choice for a reason. Here it is. You know, if you have to make implementation decisions, keep that in mind too. All right, so on that note, I'm going to talk a little bit about design documents. So we talked about the idea of requirements and having this sort of big collection of documents describing what the user wants and specifications describing how we want it built. Well, again, the, this idea of a design talk, the design document is pretty common where we're trying to describe the design that we've come up with, the decomposition that we've got, what we've come up with for our system. What are the different parts of it going to be? What are they supposed to do? How are they supposed to fit together? How are they supposed to interact? And why have we done this? Why have we chosen this as our design? And like with all the other documents, it's going to be a mix of, you know, plain text giving an intuitive feel for what's going on, diagrams, examples, pseudocode, whatever it takes 
to make it all clear. And again, it's important that this includes the rationale, the priorities that we made the decisions based on, right? Make sure that that makes it into your documentation. And as always, we're going to want to go through and make this an iterative process, right? Review our design documents, kick it around with different people, kick it around with the people who are going to be working with it, and make sure we keep it up to date as the design evolves, right? as the system evolves. Um, one of the things that I did want to mention, since you're probably going to run across these, not necessarily in this course, but certainly in some of the other courses you, uh, you deal with, are data flow diagrams. And this is just one way of describing how information moves around in a system um, or within a subsystem and between systems. So the idea is it's kind of a hierarchical top-down collection of diagrams where the top level shows the system as a whole and what the system as a whole interacts with, what other systems, what users, and shows basically what information flows to and from the system. So what goes between the system and you know the system admin, what goes between the system and the end user. So um, you're just trying to, again, as the, the name suggests, data flow, you're showing where information flows into and out of the system. And then you might break it down and say, okay, if we've got our system and we wanna break it up into three major subsystems, you're going to show another diagram that shows that breakdown, shows the three subsystems which users and which other systems they interact with, how the different subsystems interact with each other, and again, the flow of data between them, what information goes back and forth between the different pieces of the system. And you just continue this hierarchical decomposition. You might take your subsystem and break it down into you know, five different modules, and so your next diagram will show those five modules, how they interact with each other which ones interact with different kinds of users or databases or other systems. And again, it's showing the flow of data between them. What kind of information is exchanged between these different modules? So you will run across this. Um, it is a useful way for providing a, a kind of visual idea of what the decomposition of your system is. And so that's a really useful thing to include in your design documents to give people uh, a picture, an understanding, a visualization of what's going on. All right, we'll leave the I or design ideas there for now. We'll pick up with more stuff next time around.